A massive thank you to G Merck, Kevin, Jatin, Brian, and Patrick for subscribing to the channel. If you're already featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video. We're still here back with round eight of the F122 My Team Career Mode. Yesterday we return to the Azerbaijan City Circuit. Of course, if you missed out on the last video from Monaco uh, that went live a few days ago, I would definitely recommend going back and checking it out. But as well, of course, a massive thank you to all of you guys for the continued continued support on the channel. We're trying to hit 80,000 subscribers at the moment. Of course, the big goal of 100k by the end of the year. Still, you know, we're slowly getting there. Slowly but surely. I definitely still believe 100k is doable by the end of the year then. But having a look as we head in towards Baku this weekend, they can see we've still got more upgrades in the works there. Two major, one minor upgrade as we're trying to get all the parts sorted on the car. Championship-wise, though, we've had a very, very difficult run of form over the last few weekends. That Hamilton and George Russell still absolutely dominating the way in the Drivers and uh, Constructors World Championship, but McLaren are starting to be on a bit of a fight back there. Lando Norris, of course, taking his first win last time out in the Monaco Grand Prix. We, however, have finished 11th three times in a row in the last three Grand Prix. We would have finished 10th at Monaco, but we let Oscar Piastri reclaim the place right at the end of the day there, as, you mean, to be fair, he did probably deserve the top 10 after we made a bit of a strategy blunder. But, yeah, this weekend, though, out in Baku, fingers crossed this track should suit the car a little bit more. And, yeah, hopefully we can try and get, finally, a top 10 back on the board. Right, well, here we are then, back on the Azerbaijan streets for round eight of the year. Already quite crazy. That we're one third's distance into our second season on F1 at 22. But having a lot of fun with it in the process there. Of course, Baku, theoretically, if pass is anything to go by, should be quite an easy track for picking up the R&D points. Of course, you've just got the mammoth front straightaway to hopefully try and pick up the points you need. But we'll wait and see. I'll say that now and then get three red scores. As we head out of the final corner. And then please don't say I've just jinxed myself with this. We're still in the red. We're still in the red. We're going to be in the red at the end of our first run. And it's by a tenth of a second. That's annoying. We'll try and go for another one. Right, and then of our second run. Fingers crossed this time around. We were a lot better as we went out of the final corner. As you just watched the Delta come back to us. There we go. That's going to be a purple score. I can't believe I said that at the end of the first run. And completely jinxed myself. Heading out of the final corner then of our tyre wear run. This time around, it's only going to be the green score. It's one of the only challenges you can't really manipulate by getting really clear on the delta. But I think that's a pretty safe session from ourselves. Let's get into qualifying then here in Baku. We made it into Q3 again for the first time in four Grand Prix back at Monaco. Can we repeat that here? Before we jump into that, though, I just wanted to let you know of a brilliant competition going on hosted by Imperium Experiences. Have you ever wanted to attend the Italian Grand Prix? Yes, the home of Ferrari, the Temple of Speed, and of course, the mighty Tafosi. Imperium Experiences are offering you the chance to win two tickets for the weekend and a three-night stay at a four-star hotel. All you have to do is enter their competition on their site linked down below in the description or my bio, and you could be off out tomorrow. Monza. The competition is limited to just 900 inches, however, and closes on the 6th of August, so make sure if you want to get involved to do it as soon as possible. Currently, they're also offering an extra promotion where if you buy two entries, you get a third completely free, increasing your chances to win at an incredibly cheap price. They even have a handy guide on their site on how to enter, so I would definitely recommend checking it out, and a massive thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Right, well, qualifying day then here in Azerbaijan, and safe to say, you know, this track really does hark back to the first three races of the year. You know, around those first three Grand Prix, we were so strong in the car there, around some high-speed venues. So, fingers crossed this weekend we can see a return to the top ten. Although, saying that, you know, Monaco, we almost did really well there as well. Like I said, we could have still finished tenth place. We could have been running up in seventh or eighth, had I not butchered the strategy, but... You know, we got to move on, we got to move past it, and hopefully this weekend, try and finally cement ourselves back inside the top 10, but it's going to require a good qualifying lap. Well, fastest time so far, then, just dipping in to the 139s as we weave our way 
through this final chicane. All right, off the final corner. We've definitely lost a little bit of distance to the McLaren up the road, but just want to try and get a safe first banker lap in. Certainly hope we can make it into Q2 this weekend. There is Lando Norris 39.3. We set a 41.1 there, a long way off, but of course that McLaren is very, very fast. Well, heading out then for our second run in Q1 here. Times are certainly tumbling. And we're going to need about another six tenths of a second if we want to see ourselves into Q2 once more. There, Alex Albon, currently the man just at the top of the drop zone. Of course, re-signed with Williams on a long-term deal just earlier on this week. There as we head through Turn 1. Really attacking the curves that time round. Didn't know, to be honest, you could mount him as much as I did then. As we head out through Turn 2. Tenth up already there. This is what we need, you know. Like I said, that first lap was pretty safe and conservative. But now we need to actually try and start ringing some pace out of the car. Let's see if we've got enough to make it into Q2. They're really late on the brakes down at Turn 3. And that's going to put us further up in the green. A really tidy run through the middle part of the lap. You just need to try and get a nice tidy run out of this final okay, corner. Pretty tidy there as well. So three quarters of a second up. As we head through the final couple of turns there, just make sure we keep it clean and tidy. Don't scrub off any speed as we head out of the final turn. But then up towards the start-finish line, I always say it, but you just watch the clock slowly tick by. Will it be good enough to see us through into Q2? P13, we'll have it. Thank you very much. Safely into Q2 then. But we're going to need a lot more if we want to make it into the final knockout. And there we go then, having a look at the Q1 times. There's Charles Leclerc and his Ferrari looking monstrously fast as well, getting in between the Mercedes. Maybe Ferrari are going to be back this weekend at long last there. But Alpine Esteban Ocon looking very, very strong there, ahead of Carlos Sainz. Any major surprises out in Q1 there? I think Piastri probably a bit gutted with that, but only half a second behind myself there. We only did sneak by though by a couple of tenths of a second, so it's certainly still very, very close, but... Yeah, I think we can definitely get the better of the Aston Martins, though, this weekend. Maybe, just maybe, we can sneak through into Q3, but we're going to need a worldie of a lap. Right, for seven and a half minutes left on the clock as we head out for our first run in Q2 there. Definitely need to be trying to look closer to those 39s if we want to be making it into Q3. But breaking a bit early through Turn 1 is not going to do me any favours there. Really rattle up against the curves on the entry and on the exit through the first corner, but fourth gear. Fourth gear is your friend around Baku, especially through all the 90 degree corners in the first half of the lap, and then it's just about trying to be as brave as you can on the breaks down into turn three there. 100 meters always seems far too late through there. The car will slow down. So you head through turn four, rattle up against the wall that time around. That might be a little bit of front wing damage. Our first lap here in Q2 has felt a little bit sloppy, I won't lie, as we head out through the final corners, but fingers crossed it's still going to be an OK benchmark there. As you can see Sonoda on a 39.9, running as close to the wall as we can as we head out of the final corner, and it's going to be a 40.9 there, a second away from Yuki Sonoda. We're going to need, yeah, to find a whole lot more as we head out of the final corner. It's going to be very, very tight here. If we're going to be able to make it onto our final run, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. I think we know we're out in Q2 for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's P16 now. What an anticlimactic end to the session. But we just didn't quite have enough time to make it back out. We did nick the front wing on the first run there. And that's what's going to cost me at the end of qualifying. You can see Carlos signs that out in his Alpine. Pierre Gasly doing a fantastic job to sneak into the top 10 there. But... Yeah, not convinced we would have been much higher than P16 had we even got the lap in all nice and tidy there. I mean, 39.6s are phenomenally fast over one lap pace there. But like I said, we just had a bit of front wing damage that we had to sort out before we went back out. How on earth changing a wing can take like five seconds, but in the pits it's going to take a minute? I'll never really understand. But it's P16 for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Fingers crossed we can try and get closer to the points today. I do not want another P11 finish. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 
thousand completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years, and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading, as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself, as well as thousands of others, trust Bybit as their crypto. And a warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square, heart of Baku and home, of course, to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With high speeds, tight corners and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today. So our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes and hopefully out of the barriers. The Baku city circuit measures roughly six kilometers and it's made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge where the smallest of mistakes could lead to a catastrophic consequence for any one of our drivers. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position. Edging out Lando Norris, he'll start from P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Bottas, Russell, Charles Leclerc and Verstappen, Ricardo, Perez, Ocon and Pierre Gasly, Sainz, Magnussen, Yuki Tsunoda, and Stroll, Mick Schumacher, Mr. Monaco, Felipe Drogovic, and Alex Albon, Oscar Piastri, Joe, Latifi, and Robert Schwartzman. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Right, well, here we are then on the grid here in Baku, Azerbaijan. Very much looking forward to the 26 laps ahead of us today, but fingers crossed, like I said, I, I don't want another P11 in this championship. That's the big goal in this one. But yeah, hopefully we can get a nice, clean, tidy start as well. You know, slipstream is absolutely critical around this circuit. We are running very, very low on the wings. But Hamilton, of course, yeah, just wants to further extend his lead over his teammate there. You know, I think there's probably a little bit of worry down at Mercedes as to just how fast that McLaren car might be as he's got Lando Norris alongside him on the front row today. But yeah, we've still got a huge battle going on in the midfield where we're, we're all basically just fighting for scraps, but that's the way it goes sometimes. As we try and build up heat in the tyres, then as we head down towards the start finish line, when you're weaving around, it really makes you realise just how tight this front straightaway still is there. It's not very wide around this circuit, but yeah, wondering whether, you know, an alternate strategy might be doable here today. You know, perhaps I'm really just trying it at every possible venue at the moment. See what races you can do a medium soft on. But yeah, we'll wait and see though. Purple score as we line up on the grid here for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. We've got both Aston Martin cars directly in front of us. Mick Schumacher and Felipe Drogovic, both has cars alongside me. Five red lights though here in Baku. And it's going to be very long hold, but lights out and away we go. Not my finest as we try and put the power down in towards Turn 1, but we'll steam up the inside of Mick Schumacher there through the first apex. You can already see top four romping away there. It's everyone else two by two just behind him. Don't want to be too aggressive at the start here as Mick Schumacher's going to try and come back at me off the corner. But still really struggling with tyre temperatures there. As you can see, Schumacher is going to slot in in front there. It's Drogovic and Albon just dispute P17 behind me as well. What's Sonoda doing? Trying to weave around a little bit in the braking zone there. Maybe he was a bit worried. This is Aston Martin Alpha Tauri. Aston Martin Alpha Tauri. Mick Schumacher just again backs out of a move with us as we just get a little bit caught out under Yuki Sonoda's gearbox as well. There is through the next corner around the outside of Yuki. Oh, I just felt like he was going to turn in on me there. So he sort of locked up and backed out of it. But yeah, a bit of a dramatic start then here in Baku. But up the one spot as long as Mick Schumacher doesn't try anything down in towards the castle section. Let's just wait and see if we all make it through here in one piece on lap one. That's so different to how you race through there in qualifying. Of course, then you really just flick it in. It's just one corner in a qualifying run. But when you get into the race, the first few laps, yeah, the castle becomes a whole lot more scary 
once more. As you can see, yeah, Schumacher Drogovic is still just behind us. So, yeah, Sonoda not having the wet start in the wall. They're down one spot. But as we head down through the final couple of corners, Pierre Gasly proved that Alpha Tauri has got solid race pace in it. As Hamilton's going to lead then at the end of lap one there with Lando Norris and Bottas in hot pursuit. George Russell probably not happy to have qualified P4 behind the pair of them. You can already see they're running away from the Ferraris and the Red Bulls. They've pretty much been so far this season disputing fifth through eighth. It's Mike. Where has Mick Schumacher come from? As we head down towards someone. Then Mick Schumacher with phenomenal pace down in towards the first corner there. We'll try and do the old up and under on him through turn one. Oh, a little bit close for comfort there. Trying to get a wheel bang in between myself and Mick, but we'll slam the door through turn two and very make it clear to him that P15 is still ours as we've lost a bit of ground to the cars in front. Well, as everyone else still a bit worried about Constantina and up, we have closed in the gap on Yuki Sonoda once more. It's not sure how Albon's done it, but he's now got the jump on both Haas cars through the middle sector of the lap. There is Hamilton trying to pull away at the front of the field there, but look at how solid the AI top end speed still is. They're having to use a lot of battery just to even match Yuki Sonoda just in front of us. I know the Alpha Tauri is not a slow car, but maybe we're going to need even less front wing if we want any chance there. I thought we were running quite low on downforce here, but perhaps that's why we struggled in qualifying. But yeah, that's, that's a real surprise. Yeah, I mean, we already know just how strong the AI are top end speed around a lot of the circuits on F122. It desperately, desperately needs to get fixed at some point in the near future. But, yeah, I mean, if we can gain time through the twisty bits, which it looks like we can, as long as I don't do something stupid and lock up, like I just did. We're still a big, big train of cars, though, that extends right up to in towards the points. To yeah, Mark was giving me a little bit of a kick forward there as well, as, yeah, I mean, this train does really extend quite high up the rostrum. So I think, yeah, you know, we've got to be patient early on here. Just play our cards right and try and tick cars off where we can. It is like we're rocking a GP2 engine at the moment. I mean, every time we get out of the final corner, we're pretty close behind Sonoda and then he seems to engage like an extra turbo or a ninth gear. Something the Alpha Tauri has, whatever it is that we don't early on in this GP. But like I said, I'm wondering whether we might be able to one-stop this one uh, mediums to soft tyres. Having a look at the tyre wear. You know, if we can get these sort of lap 15, lap 16, I certainly wouldn't say it's impossible here to try and then go soft to the end. And, you know, it might just be the difference as we almost Nico Hulkenberg it down at turn three. I know he didn't do it at that corner, but definitely don't want to turn in too early and rip a front wheel off. Bye, Sonoda. It was lovely seeing you again, mate. I mean, just look at that at the final corner. I mean, we are gaining slightly back this time, so maybe he's used a lot of battery early on, but... Oh, that's, that's optimistic down at turn one. We'll keep it out of the wall, luckily. But, yeah, really, I just want to see, you know, Sonoda's rear wing a bit more. And he keeps running away from me down the straight. So we have to try and get a bit closer in the corners. I mean, fair play. Alex Albon has now managed to get himself within one second of me. I'm sure he's going to fly past me at some point over the next couple of laps. But, yeah, despite the fact we've had DRS, the Williams man has somehow been able to bring himself closer to this battle. What a disappointing weekend it's been for Alfa Romeo though so far. They just seem to have nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah, and I think now I've actually got to start getting a bit worried of Alex Albon in this race because that Williams is not slow anyway. And now he's got the DRS, he might be a bit like a heat-seeking missile to be head back down towards turn one. Yeah, I really don't know what to do about tyre strategy still. I'm still wondering whether it's worth gambling trying going a bit longer. But we're going to have to lower the wing anyway, the front wing. We're probably going to have to bring it down to about six, I reckon. If we want any sort of fighting chance in the second half of the afternoon. Oh! Oh! Hamilton out of the Grand Prix there from the lead. It looks like Mercedes have finally slipped and blundered here. As Hamilton looks like that's just been an engine failure then based on where he's parked. And he's going to promote into P14 though. But the first Mercedes retirement of the year... If I'm not mistaken there, heartbreak for Lewis Hamilton. And surely now George Russell and both McLarens, they're going to be looking at that, thinking we've now got an opportunity to take out some big, big points. Lap 11 then. Team do want us in at the end of this one. As well, that's a little bit brave down at turn one once more. Noticing Sonoda starting to drop a little way back from Lance Stroll. Often I think the Alpha Tauri is one of the better looking Formula 1 cars still, but today I absolutely don't want to see any more 
of that thing's rear wing there. So I'm going to try and extend the stint a little bit further. We are going to have to try and nurse the rears, however. So again, that's... We're getting brave into the braking zone so far this lap. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, we've just got to be really careful on the tyres still. Because yeah, I certainly think 16 laps is doable. But they won't be comfortable. But we're going to have to try and throw something at this if we want to move up the order. Because I'm going to try and lower the wing as well. So we should be very, very quick for a few laps. But yeah, the front tyres are probably going to bleed towards the end. I guess we're going to see our first few cars into the pit lane then. Nine the McLaren into the pits. Actually, it's not looking like many people are going to come into the pit lane at the end of that lap there. One of the Alpines is in, as well as, I think, uh, Pierre Gasly into the lane. So we're going to be up at a P12 then. But I guess that's reassuring that everyone else is trying to extend their stint a little bit longer. I don't think anyone's going to be trying to emulate the strategy we're going for, but certainly a promising sign. Oh, that's annoying because of the DRS. Oh, sorry, the ERS even, the AI I've got. We've now dropped out of the range from Yuki Tsunoda. There is he and Lance Stroll both going to dive in. We've still got a lot of cars, though, trying to extend the stint a bit further. I mean, some of these guys are going to have to pit end of 14. And we're already really planning on going one, maybe two laps longer than that, so... Yeah, things are certainly getting interesting Oscar's here. In Is anyone there. trying to gamble it? Surely not. Okay, so that's quite interesting then. Looks like most of the cars still out on circuit then started on a set of hard compound tyres. So that's why they're able to go as far as they have. Myself and K-Mag might be the only ones risking it at the moment. As George Russell now we're starting to take a bit more time out. And they don't really want to get caught battling the front runners later on in the stint. But if we can get some cheeky DRS off them... And maybe, you know, every little helps and all that. There we go. Yep. Kevin Magnussen into the pits as we expected there. So it looks like, yeah, we have got both Red Bulls, both Ferraris and both McLarens on a set of hard tyres. Have Mercedes missed something here with all the front runners? What on earth is going on? Here comes George Russell then. Please don't try it. He's going to try it down the hill. Oh, mate. Oh, George Russell's put himself in the wall. Oh, no. Big, big mistake there from George Russell as he tried to make the lunge work on me. I never really thought it was going to work out when he went for it at the inside there. But still, I mean, how much is the Mercedes going to be able to gain on me as we head through the final couple of corners, despite the fact he's lost half a front wing? How is he still pulling? Like, what's going on, please, gamers? What is that? How am I meant to compete against this at the moment there? As George Russell, I think he's going to head into the pits, though. So big, big error from George Russell there. It's for Stappen now on to a set of the mediums to see him through to the end. We want to try and go the same distance on a set of soft compound tyres here. But, yeah, surely, George Russell, this has been a catastrophic weekend for Mercedes. I think, yeah, this lap is certainly the one we want to be boxing in this Grand Prix. As team's still trying to recommend a new strat. They reckon hards now, but we're definitely going on to a set of softs to see us through to the checkered flag. We've got to just take the gamble at this stage of the year, even if we've got a nice time safety car, something like that. But certainly feel like we've probably lost out a bit of time, obviously staying out on these uh, medium tyres there as we get it slowed down nice and tidy into the pit lane. Where are we going to re-emerge? in this Grand Prix. Should be out of range, George Russell, shouldn't we? If my maths hasn't failed me, but he's right towards the rear of the field, so this is really not looking good at the moment. 2.3, get on with it, come on. And we're still down. We've actually lost a lot there, so we're now down. So we've, yeah, actually lost that quite a lot of time here. I've noticed both Alfa Romeos are still out on the circuit, and maybe a couple of other cars that I've failed to pick up. But yeah, we've lost a good five seconds the likes of Alex Albon and co up the road. We're still going to have to be careful on these tyres towards the end of the Grand Prix. Like I said, if I can just get this thing inside the top 10, I would walk away a very, very happy man as, yeah, the lower front wing angle. This better give us some proper straight line speed, otherwise we are screwed. Alright, it's time for the ultimate test then. How much time are we going to lose to Mick Schumacher as we head out of the final corner? Look at that! We're not losing anything! I mean, the Haas car, it's hardly the quickest car on the circuit at the moment, but with some DRS as well, we might be able to get close to actually go for an overtake on a car here on F122. Mick Schumacher's squeezed himself ridiculously far to the inside there, so we will swoop around the outside of the Haas man. He's surely going to try and keep the nose there. Yes, he is, but we've got so much extra grip at the moment that around the outside we go, and now I'm going to P14 once more 
in this GP there. Gap to Albon has come down a fair old bit as well. And now we've got eyes on Yuki Tsunoda. Because I think that's both Haskars trying to dispute P15 behind me. We've got to get out of dive. We've got to get out of dive bomb range. I was about to start lap 19 then of this race. We are still taking good time out of Albon and Sonoda, and I can only hope we're doing the same with the cars in front of them. Just being really careful to avoid any wheel spin, though, just because the rear tyres at the end of the first stint were not particularly fun to drive on. But yeah, we have now definitely as well, because of the lower wing, got a lot more top-end speed, and it doesn't seem to be costing me too much through the corners either. I can just see K-Mag and Pierre Gasly disputing the final points place just up in front. We just need to get past them. That's the key. We want P10. All right, come on then. Let's see if we can get a run on Alex Albon as we head out of the final couple of turns. Should have a lot more grip than the Williams there as we try and be smooth on the steering. Again, don't want to scrub off any extra momentum than you have to. There is out of the final corner we go. We are going to have to completely drain the battery as we head back down towards cell one here. Gaining, gaining, gaining though on the Williams to the outside once more. Surely we can make this move happen. There is Albon again. On the inside there, just pinch him towards the apex. Around the outside we go. And now up into P13 of this GP there. So we get very, very close to the wall on the exit. But now we've got to try and get ourselves within the one second of Sonoda. As Alvin surely yeah, is too far back to go for anything. But yeah, I mean, Stroll and Gasly, they need to start battling if I want to try and close up to them. Because four seconds in seven laps is still going to be a tall order when you think about the tyre drop-off. I think we're a little bit too far back to get Sonoda down the front straightaway here, but we are still taking good time out of all the cars around us. Maybe we can try and get a run back down in towards turn three on Yuki. I don't think the AI are using as much battery into that corner. Ten seconds to Oscar Piastri. He has not had a fun afternoon of it. It's George Russell back into the pit lane again for whatever reason. Not too sure what strategy George Russell is now trying to do in this Grand Prix, but we need to try and get past Yuki Tsunoda now or never, I fear, in this Grand Prix. There is to the inside of the Alpha Tower. Oh, it's a cheeky send that we just about pull off there. Like I said, we absolutely had to go for it. Didn't want to sit behind him for yet another lap. But you can just see now, starting to struggle a tiny bit. Maybe just overstepping the rear slightly there. But yeah, the gap to the cars in front is still coming down, close to a second a lap. As wheel spin like that, we do not need getting really worried at the moment. All the time we seem to gain on strolling Gasly around most of the lap. We just lose so much of it down the front straight over there. I think we still gained about seven tenths that lap on the pair of them. We just can't help but wonder it's getting a little bit too little too late here. Late on in Baku. Still trying to look after the tyres as well to make sure if we did get to them we'd have a bit of fight towards the end. But I need them to battle if we want any chance. It's about to start lap 24 then of this Grand Prix. Tire wear warning light has come back on, so I'm not convinced I'm really going to be able to do anything here unless we get some sort of miracle in the final few laps. I can't help but actually wonder whether we're actually going to slip backwards behind Sonoda again. We've spent so much of this race just surrounded by Yuki Sonoda. But three laps to go here in Baku. Now, yeah, we are getting closer and closer to puncture territory. Oh, here comes Sonoda. Two laps to go, please, Yuki. I spent so much of today trying to fend and close up to you, and now you're just going to waltz back past me with two laps to go here in Baku. And to be honest, I'm not really convinced I can do anything against Sonoda there as we head back down in towards Selmon. We just haven't got the grip at the moment. You can just see now how bad the tyres are getting there. 72% on the rear. I think if we can stay ahead of Albon... That would probably be quite good there. But you can just see still wheel spinning in big gear off the exit of turn two. We have again tried it, but nothing at the moment seems to be sticking in this series. I mean, about to start the last lap then of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And now even Albon has got back within the DRS range here. So it certainly has not worked for us today. As these tyres are going to be up in towards 90% by the time we get round towards the checkered flag here. I want to try and defend from the Williams, but I'm not convinced we're going to get a say on the matter, to be honest. Look at that big wobble at turn one there. Albon to the inside, into turn two. I'll try and hook it up around the outside of him on the exit, but surely we're just going to have no grip there as Albon gets the DRS on me. And I think, you know, we, we've learnt, certainly learned today just how quick the AI are. Top end speed there. Just, I mean, surely, yeah, we're not going to be able to do anything 
down in towards the next corner. I mean, it's like driving on ice. It's, it is quite weird, the way the rear tyres seem to go on F122. You know, previous games it was all on traction. Nowadays it's actually a lot more on corner entry. But, you know, you try and just tip the car in. And it is just all over the road. It is like trying to race on ice at the moment in this car. But round in the final couple of corners, McLaren for the second race in a row there. I get a bag of one, two. I'm not too sure which one it is at the front of the field. I want to say it's Lando Norris, but it certainly wouldn't hold me to it at the moment as we've got other things to worry about. No, it's Bottas after leaving Mercedes at the end of 2021 there as we we're accidentally... Oh, we've got a bunch up. It's all over. <laughs> after leaving Mercedes at the end of the 2021 season. I mean, this is just a nightmare. Um, Bottas is going to be back on the top step of a Formula 1 podium there. Lando Norris in P2. So Bottas, yeah, rewriting the wrongs of last weekend there. But, yeah, we're going to be all the way down in last place. Come the chequered flag at this one. Always was a gamble. And try and take the tyres as far as we wanted to. And we have had a puncture on the final lap of the race there. Please don't. Oh, I just want to make it round to the chequered flag, to be honest. But, yeah, such a disappointing result here in... I mean, that was bound to happen right at the very end there. Of course, we're going to get pretty much two corners from home and have exactly nothing to show for it. another Azerbaijan Grand Prix. A fascinating race and a well-deserved victory. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving. Nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. They're making their way out onto the podium now. Great race from the McLaren team, and I'm very happy to see them there on that top step of the podium. Now, let's take a look at the driver's standings. Now, let's discuss Ant. Who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? Carlos Sainz would be my first choice for this race. He had excellent race stamina, giving him the opportunity to charge through the ranks. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, there we are then, the end of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And Valtteri Bottas, like we said, back on top here in Formula 1 and his new team down at McLaren there. What a race victory that is for the Finn there. 1.2 seconds clear of Lando Norris, like I said, ready to rewrite the wrongs of Monaco there. Charles Leclerc gets back on the podium in P3 ahead of Perez, Ricardo, Carlos Sainz are even able to beat Max Verstappen is quite funny in his Alpine there and then you can see Ocon and both Aston Martins rounding out the top 10 there. George Russell on a three-stop strategy down in 16th place. That was definitely not the plan to go to today but he got way too optimistic trying to get around myself and put himself in the barriers there. Championship-wise, though, Perez jumps Carlos Sainz a little bit further up the order there, despite the brilliant result for the Alpine. Esteban Ocon is slowly closing in the points on myself. The same can be said for K-Mag and Lance Stroll. Constructors-wise, though, Mercedes still 99 points clear at the front of the championship there. Ferrari still hanging on ahead of Red Bull. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And we will be back very, very soon with more 
F1 22 content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members, so a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below, and yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.